I don't know why you ask them. Yeah. Let us ask Mary to start reading for us. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 John Amen. chapter. I'm reading from John chapter 20. Verses 19 to 29. St. John chapter 20. Verses 19 to 21. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Then the same day as evening, being the first day of the week, when the door was shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Stop there. Don't don't close it. Put your let just open it and keep it there because you are gonna continue to read from there. Okay. Doors were shut. Welcome to the Friday in the octave of Easter. The Easter Friday. What we are doing this evening, we are not celebrating any Holy Communion today. We are coming to get something. So it's not a traditional service this evening. We are coming to get something powerful. Number one, peace. Is a creative thing. It is what you use to create. It is the, the thing of God. That when it is given to you. You will become a creative person. Where people flee, run away, you will find opportunity. You will find opportunity. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to feel us, feel me tonight with spirit and life i am a spirit being therefore i need spirit power you are the spirit the mighty spirit you were sent to help the church we are Fill me, Jesus, with your life. You took that which is of you and asked the Holy Spirit to make it known and to enforce it. And tonight I will speak as you, not as me. Let's go. Don't try to do too many things at a time. Don't try to take too many things. Take one big project at a time. Solve it. Take one big project and solve it. I've been there whereby people tell you, oh, this will work. You run and go there. Oh, that will work. You run and go there. Oh, this will work. You run and go there. There was a time in Africa where driving a Mercedes Benz, all of you know that if you, if, you, if you live in Africa, you are at the mercy of trend. Trend. What is it that reigns? Uzo, where are you? 
what what is it that reigns? Good. In Also, you understand that language, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand Kalaba language? Only my mom. Huh? Only my mom does. I don't. Is your mom from Kalaba or from Akwaibom? From Ibibio land? She was born there. Are you serious? Yes. You are a witch. Now I understand you. You are a witch. You. I now see why you keep following me. I now see it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> not just that you are a witch, you are a winch, 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 you know? It's not even a witch, you are, you are a winch. Yes, so. <laughs> You see, in Africa, everything is a trend. But every two or three years, maybe Toyota is what begins to, to rain. That's the trend. Everybody will abandon all the cars they have. And they will steal, kill, scam, do anything to drive a Toyota. After two, three years, it doesn't rain anymore. It's no longer the trend. Is Toyota Camry. Everybody goes for Toyota Camry. I'm telling you the truth. That's the way they behave. They, they behave like mad people out there. Everybody goes for Toyota Camry. After that is Mercedes. So, hey, even if that Mercedes comes from a West Virginia, the one of the poorest states, even if that Mercedes, as long as they it has, it looks like a Mercedes, and you know, has Mercedes emblem, they are going to get it. It doesn't matter. As long as they are seen driving it, everybody now starts going for Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz. After two, three years, it stops. It's now Honda. It's now Honda. Everybody begin to go for Honda. Everybody drive. If you don't have a Honda, it's like something is wrong with you. I'm serious. Then, after that, then it's a particular kind of outfit. It's a particular kind of outfit. If I was living in Africa, I would make a hell of money out of them. Because of the way I dress. All the men and women would want to dress like me. So I will I will go to the Chinese, Japanese, uh, South Koreans, I will go to the to the uh, Germans, uh, English, and tell them don't sell any of this material to anybody. If I catch you guys selling this, you guys are in trouble with me. I will be the sole supplier of this. So everybody will have to pass through me to get that. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Because when somebody died, that's when they will bring their money to come and spend. Because everything is to be done, to be seen, to compete, to be said that you participated, you had it. That's what it is. It's not that they need it. They don't need it. When somebody is alive, nobody will give you a dime for anything in Africa. But when somebody dropped dead, all of them will come there to come and compete. Do you know that they compete over dead body? Who buried the person more? <laughs> I'm telling you. Who buried the person inside a rocket going to Mars? Or who buried the person inside a, a hammer? And they will bury a whole car. These people are crazy. Something is wrong with them in Africa. I'm telling you. A man that has never wore a suit before. A woman that has never wore an English gown. Or an American well-made, uh, uh, what is it, blouse and skirt with nice quality like a shoe. When that woman dies, bam, they will go and buy it and put on her to make her look good for everybody to come and see. And everybody will, even people when when she was when when that woman was sick, they will not give a dime because of the hatred in their heart to go and help that poor woman. Nobody. But when that woman dropped dead, bam. All of them will start contributing money. They will start breeding goat and cows and sheep to come and kill, to make a big festival. The same cows that if somebody cooked water chicken, water goat, water cow, I'm talking like Caribbean, I'm talking like Jamaican, I'm talking like I'm from Barbarian or St. Lucian, 
or Aruba or Grenada. You know, they call it water. This what we call pepper soup, Uzo, what we call Mary, what we call pepper soup. Vicky, you've eaten pepper soup with me, yeah. so you know it. Yeah. Vicky, you know pepper soup. All those things. Instead of killing it for the person to drink that water from that cow, from that soup, and live longer, they will not do it. Nope. But when the person dropped dead, bam, they are going to use that dead person's body to make money. They will collect enough money to make uniform. Everybody will wear the same uniform. There will be a party. That person, they never threw one body yeah. for that person. I'm telling you how bad these people are. Yeah. How bad they are. <laughs> so, so when you are alive, they do not want you to eat from the cow. But when you are dead, they are going to use you to eat. That's who they are. Yeah. <laughs> you want you want to get married. Hey, they got people for you. Very, very quickly, they have people for you. Yep. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. a party is about to be thrown and they are going to make money. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. They'll ask you, what is wrong with your husband? Everybody is driving a everybody is driving a, a BMW. Why can't you even if it is it is the bubble the back, 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 boom 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 kind of a, a BMW? <laughs> Let your husband have it. Let people know that they have it. Come on. Why should we be the only person that do not drive this? Come on, it's not looking good. That is why in Africa, yes, that's why in Africa it's almost like they are all thieves. A lot of them. It's almost like they are all thieves. Scammers. I'm telling you. It's a terrible thing. Uh huh. You will see some people when the BMW is raining, you will see some people, they have to push, you have to get some men. And women will remove their headscarf and tie on their waist to come and push, to come and push the car to start. Everybody say, yay! And they, as long as it starts, it makes noise. The, the train is on. The train is on. Crazy. You live in that continent, you will have no peace of mind and no mind of peace. That's why go and see. When they, when they, when, when people of European descent and left and gave them back their country, nobody has been able to improve anything. I was sharing with Jolly today, Jolly from Congo. I said to her, Jolly, um, not Jolly, Toela of Zambia. I was sharing with Toela. She's in Zambia. I said to her, Kenneth Kaunda is from Zambia. Kwame Nkrumah is from Ghana. Julius Nyerere is from Tanzania. Uh, Jomo Kenyatta is from Kenya. Obafemi uh, Awolowo, Nam Diazikiwe, and uh, the rest of them from the north. Yeah, he's from Nigeria. Then, what is the name of this one from South Nelson Mandela is from South Africa. What's the, yeah, what is the, from South Africa. What is the name of the, the idiot that just, that died uh, uh, two years ago. What is his name from uh, Zimbabwe? Um, the one from Zimbabwe now? Oba? Huh? Oba Sanjo. No, not Oba Sanjo. Oba Sanjo is still alive. Um, okay. At least, at least I like that one because he brought oppression for the nation. He told everybody to go back to agriculture. They, they, they hate him for that. That one has a big poultry, big fishery, a big farming. Right there in Ota, in Nigeria. That one. That one is smart enough that he told all the white people, all the yeah, white farmers. Huh? Eh? <laughs> oh yeah, he's a conny man too. Yeah, I know that. I know that with his big palm wine belly. I know I know that. You know? Uh huh. Those people they can't do anything for the country. So he told all the white farmers that we chased away from Zimbabwe to come to his place. And they gave them big, 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 thousands upon thousands of acres of land in Nigeria. Those, that's the man that has head. You chase these people out, he brought them in for them to come and... You see, the problem, I was sharing with Tuela today of Zambia. I said, Tuela, you guys have copper. With Jolly today, I was sharing with her. She come, she come from Goma. Uso, you know Goma. Mary, you know Goma uh, in the Congo. There is nothing yeah. they don't have in Goma. Yeah. There is nothing they don't have. 
Copa. They, do you guys know that what they use in building cell phones, telephones, computers, any kind, is from Congo? Congo, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's uh, where uh, all uh, those uh, things uh, are. Yes. Yeah. They are all there. And those countries are poor. They don't have nothing. I say because all these African leaders that people are celebrating, Kwame Nkrumah, Julio Nyerere, Jomo Kenyatta, Aziki of Nigeria, all these people, Nelson Mandela, I say, if you ask me a good opinion of me, I will say this, that they are all 100% trash. You say, why do you say so? I say, I say that because anybody whose first priority is not economy, how to build that nation financially and materially wise for the people is a trash to me. Anybody, anybody that becomes a leader and cannot make people to have money in their pocket and cannot make that country to be rich. If you borrow more money to pay, if you borrow money to go and pay salary, if you borrow money to go and build roads and bridges, if you borrow money to go and build schools, and go and look at they don't even build anything. They build no road. They build no school. How many people are they sending to overseas to go and study? Apart from Botswana that is doing it very well. Nobody is doing that. Nobody. And Africa is full of all the natural resources, mineral resources, all kind of resources that you can think of. Yet, they are fools leading fools or fools leading people who should have been taught who should have been trained don't let anybody fool you if you live abroad from austria to norway to switzerland to germany to france to england canada united states don't let anybody fool you if you live in western europe don't go to russia ukraine all those Eastern European country, don't go there. There's nothing there. Go to Western Europe, England, Canada, United States. Those are the places. These are organized. The founding fathers lay a strong scientific, technological, and social system for them. And Russia is trying to destroy it because Russia doesn't have anything. Misery, love company. Saudi Arabia have nothing. They don't have anything. China, go and look at this. In modern time that China began to develop. Where was China all these years? <coughs> Apart from the few places that are developed in China, China is still a village, it's still a rural area. <coughs> you can wipe away all those people I've talked about. But leave China alone because they have a business to do with me. I need to establish my industries there. That is my backyard. That's where they will produce my products. So leave them. Let them keep producing so that they can produce. Let them produce children. Let them make humans so that those humans can do my product. So if you kill the others, if you wipe the others away, leave the Chinese for me because they can work hard. So I like that. China and, uh, what is it? Russia are not known for hard working. They are propagandists. They, they talk. They are, they are conny. We call them con men. That's who they are. And con women. They are very lazy people. I don't see anything that Russians produce. There's nothing that Russia produce. Nothing. That you can say, this is, show me one burger, burger industry. Show me one burger joint. Show me one pair of shoe that is worldwide known. Show me a car that you can tell me this is made in Russia. None. One motorbike, one bicycle. That is a trend in the whole world. None. Show me one bar soap that is being sold, that is from Saudi Arabia. Or from United Arab Emirates. Or from Russia or Ukraine. None. 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 Show me one from Africa. 
It's nowadays that India is trying to become somebody. Why? Because, because, because Slow Poison got too angry with them. And they know that if she come back to that country, to India, she's going to, she's going to deal with them. That's why they have started to do something. The Tata family now went and bought Jaguar and bought BMW or so. Yeah, in order to pacify Lizzie. That's what it is. And they bought it. <laughs> do, you, do, you, yeah, do you guys know what is even funny about it? The Tata family of India went and bought Jaguar and BMW. And then they destroyed the quality. They destroyed the quality. You will buy a BMW brand new. Or Jaguar. or Jaguar and you wake up in the morning to go and drive your car to work and water has filled the seat water has filled everywhere you can't drive it it's dead now it is now like Ford found on the road dead Jaguar is no longer a good car everybody should know it Jaguar has died BMW is dead why? because an Indian family bought it what did you expect? What did you expect when Indians came and bought it? You expect them to, to, to give it the best quality that has ever been. Nope. They destroyed it. So don't even try to buy a Jaguar a BMW anymore. If you find a fairly used one, buy it. But don't go and buy a brand new Jaguar, a brand new BMW, because it's coming from an Indian family and they've destroyed it. Go, go and look it up on YouTube. On Google, you will see. Nobody will buy those cars anymore. They are no longer a raining car. Because it has been destroyed. It's like telling Chinese to take over your business. What do you expect? A hotel that used to be a seven-star hotel. You come back the next day, it's a one-star hotel. In fact, a zero-star. There is no star for it anymore. Because they want to make profit without putting back into it. There is bed box. You go and sleep in a in a in a in a motel or hotel that is owned by Indian, Pakistani, Bangladesh, Egyptian, uh, 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 what is it? Um what is the name? Indians. Go go and sleep in their hotel or motel and you will see. You wake up the next the next day, you will see your man the, the, the tip of it are swollen up because bed box came to make love to you in the night. Go and look at it, you will see. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You you go to the bathroom to go to go and use the bathroom while you are sitting on the toilet. You start scratching scratching your nyash. You start scratching your bumper. Scratch 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 like like a thief like you are a thief in the market. You know you start scratching scratch 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 scratch. You say ah why am I scratching this bad? And then you go into the bathtub or shower to go and, and then you look you see a big bump on your on one side of your butt you say oh jesus christ i didn't know that hell live in this hotel <laughs> yep <laughs> you didn't know that while you were sleeping workers of iniquity were walking on you on your butt they say yeah yeah <laughs> 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 A lot of the leaders of the Caribbean, of UAE, United Arab Emirates, Middle East, Eastern Europe, Africa, all those places, the islands, a lot of their leaders were busy doing a post-colonial speeches, post-colonial this. A, how the white man came and raped everybody, abused everybody, took the artifact there. You know, sing some reggae music, smoke some, some. Is smoking marijuana going to solve your problem? Tell me, what has the white man got to do with all of that? You are protesting a white man that has gone already. You are protesting them. Do you know how long ago Christopher Colombo, that's what I call him, Colombo, instead of Columbus. I call him Colombo because that's how reggae people call him. Christopher Colombo. He says something, bastard something, a... Eh, Hey, Samantha, you are there. Help me now. Come on. Help me. What is there? Blam blasted. Eh? Blam blasted liar. Yeah. Blasted. Blam blasted liar. Damn blasted liar. Do you know how long ago Christopher Colombo <laughs> came and went? And you are singing. And you know one thing that I don't like about reggae, reggae Rastafarianism is that it tells you the problem, but it does not tell you the solution. 
They sing about the problem. Bring about the solution. Come with your dreadlock and build something. They don't build nothing. It's like one woman was complaining about Haiti. They have all this voodoo. They don't even have a voodoo university. They don't even have a university of voodoo. She was complaining in the internet. Say, yeah. Yeah. He said, we, we do all this voodoo. Yeah. We don't have no university. We don't have no hospital. And we are dying and we are trying to play voodoo. I say, good luck. So you see people talking about how this men, how Kwame Nkrumah, how Nelson Mandela, how all this, Junior Nyerere, Aziki Iwe, Iwe Aziki, Abuafami, Awolowo, all these people. How all these people? Eh, eh, eh? What is the name? Mugabe. Eh, eh. All these people, how they were good at liberating Africa. Africa became free. I say, really? When did Africa, when the white man left, the black man came. The brown man came. The man with many colors also came. They all came. Uh, and what happened? They enslaved them again. That's what has happened. Because when you give power to somebody who has never tested power, you give money to somebody who has never had, had money, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to build a castle, going to build road from your village to the city. He's going to repair all the potholes in, in, in your different cities and states. You think that's what he's going to do? You give power to somebody who has never seen power before. You give money to somebody who has never had money before, to a group who has never had it. You think that they are going to 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 do something with the, with the power? No. Even in America that is well structured, Republican will be in government for eight years, and it's a do nothing Republicans. They are there talking and complaining and arguing and backbiting and betraying and talking against each other. Democrat come, they stay for eight years, do nothing. If it is happening like that in America, what do you think of those places? I was laughing so hard yesterday when they were playing the audio of somebody who will, who, who, who will stand with Trump and was lying up till yesterday that he did not want to tell Trump to resign. I don't know how many of you watched, watched the news last night. This guy from, uh, from California, what is his name? I've forgotten his name. You know, evil people, I don't remember their name. That is good. I love to suffer dementia when it comes to wicked people. Mm -hmm. I don't like... McCarthy. McCarthy. McCarthy, yeah, yeah. Something McCarthy, yep. He was lying up till yesterday. He didn't want to get rid of Trump. Trump is his man. And yet the idiot did not know that nothing hide in America. They have the audio. And they played it yesterday. What is he going to say today? Nothing. Devils have no shame. And what is the name of the Republican leader in the Senate? Mitch McConnell. Also, they all want, want the SOB. That's what Mitch McConnell called Trump. SOB. They want him gone. Behind the scene, they hate him. Behind the scene, they want him dead. Behind the scene, they don't want him at all. They think he's a joke and a clown. And in the public, they are, ah, Mr. President, hello. wow, you are the best. And they are talking in their heart, you clown, you joker, you bloody fucking fool, you idiot, you stupid. <laughs> That's what they are saying to him. And all they were saying behind the scenes. And all of you are a witness during, before the election, before the election of jo jo Joseph Biden. You all hate me. Is there on video? When I, when the Holy Ghost told me to tell all of you that the same people who are shaking hand and eating with him and standing with him and kissing his ring, that they are the same people who are going to go to the to the to the to the boot and vote for Joe Biden. That's how Americans are. That they are going to throw him these same people because. How do you think that it was Democrats alone and black folks alone that voted that voted Joe Biden into office? It was it was not. It was Republican leaders. They told a lot of their people not to vote for Trump behind the scene. That's what they told them. Don't vote for him. 
and they went to the vote to the polling vote and and while they were talking in public against Joe Biden and Kamala, Kamala, they went into the booth, in the closed booth, and voted for those same people. That's how Americans operate, and I like it. I like it. I really like it. I like the way they play the game. And yesterday, I was, I was busy. I was listening, and I started hearing the audio. I say, Holy Ghost, I will never disobey you because you always tell me the truth. You always tell me the truth that these are the people who will betray Trump, and they did. How do you think that Trump gonna feel now? Like a small boy. The very people came to kiss your ring. You are now hearing their audio of what they are saying about you. Devils have no shame. Devils have no shame. I am saying this to all of you. We spoke some weeks back that you must move to a location or make your current location a peaceful place where you can function. A place where you can do business. A place of success for yourself. And not a place of singing and talking about the past history. And trying to qualify your laziness and stupidity with what happened when your fathers were not even born. We could have had two services today. I was out doing business to make sure there would be money. And all these African leaders, all these Caribbean leaders, all these Arab leaders, UAE leaders, Asian leaders, many of them, did not go for the financial and material buoyancy of their nation. They went borrowing. They went borrowing. I can tell you that I have one of the best and the most strongest group in the world. One of the most strongest group in the world. Because the wealth we have, who are you going to tell? of how many rental properties we have and we do not owe any bank or any human being a dime. Where do you find that? Where do you find that? I am standing here to ask for 2,000 people around the world. If you are listening to this, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you and he's going to hold you responsible. Because when the day of poverty will hit you, you think your children will be there and your family members, and God has been telling you that he gave you a savior in the person of Hedekai Mary. I'm not saying that I'm your savior. Jesus is the savior. But financial savior. Yeah. I am now planting and I'm begging you to go and bring your money and throw it in in the lot. For us to go and be buying unit and doors, single family houses. Let's do it now. Not blame the white man. Not say that it's because you were white or black or Indian. That's why you don't have nothing. Who is stopping you from having something? Nobody. Nobody. You are stopping yourself. And I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow it. Nobody's going to stop me and my group from material and financial prosperity. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I've never been a preacher. I'm a problem solver. I came to create happiness. I came to make people rich. I talk about prosperity because I want you to have some money. For me to use your prosperity and great riches for you. That's what we are about. If people who are singing trashy music are billionaires, why will I, who is preaching the right thing to people, telling people how to solve their problem, not be a billionaire? Tell me about it. I must. It's a must. This is no joke. I'm ready to count. My, my people say that even if they did not go to school, it doesn't mean that they do not know how to count their money. 
How do you do all of this if you don't have peace? How can you create things? How can you think? If you are filled with so much, so much, everybody is busy. Blah, 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 blah. At the end of the year, you, you ask them what they were busy for. Nothing. They were just busy for nothing. You, you call somebody, I'm busy. You call, I, I was busy. I was attending this, I was doing that, I was doing that. At the end of the day, ask them, where is their money? Where is their material accumulation? Where is their riches they don't have now? It's from hand to mouth. Survivor. I want us to get beyond survivor. Mm -hmm. And you must. And for you to get beyond survival, you need what Jesus got. Jesus got one thing that is a tangible, material, mental, and supernatural thing, and it is called peace. Do you know that in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, peace is number three. Love, joy, peace. These are the three biggies. Mm -hmm. Peace is number three. Let me tell you, when a demon or a fallen when a demon possess somebody or when another human being possess another human being for those of you who understand this this game how it goes or when a negative mindset possess a positive mindset another human being can possess another human being if you didn't know you know it now i have seen it with my two eyes I've experienced it in my job. Or Satan and his host influences you from outside. What is the first thing that takes away from you? Your peace. Your peace. Your peace. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Vicky. Your peace. The first spirit to take over a human being from the world of Satan and demons. And if another human being is interested in taking over you, the first thing they introduce into your life, number one, they chase peace away. They bind it, bind it down. These strong people will bind peace because peace is a living thing. It's like, it's like receiving a shot, a vaccination. A vaccination means that virus has been introduced into you. I have so much vaccination since I was a child. Tell me any sickness in the world that kills people that I do not have the vaccination. Even vaccination that I'm supposed to be 60, 70 before I get it. I've already gotten them. Two, I've already gotten them. Some of them I got them five years ago. Some of them I got them ten years ago. A lot of virus is in me to protect me from that virus. First thing they do is to bind your peace. If you did not know, love is not imaginative thing. Love is not cake or candy. Love is not sex and money. Joy is not that. In fact, joy is even called power thing. The joy of the Lord is my power. Is my might. Is my strength. So what do you make of that? Yeah. You've been and you've been thinking that these are just fruit from the tree. You see the, the, the fruit of the spirit. Somebody will draw a tree and put and put some fruit on it. Are you kidding me? Peace <laughs> is the foundation of your life. The foundation. If you ask God to give you supernatural gift to heal the sick, cast out demon, do all of that, you can have it and still go to hell. You can have it and not be a success. After all, reading the Bible, I've came to something that shocked me. Do you know that the richest people in the Bible, 
did not cast out no demon, didn't speak in tongues, didn't heal the sick, didn't perform no miracle. Did you know that Moses and Elijah, Ezekiel, Elisha, all the powerful people you hear, the Jim Jim people who perform miracles, signs, and wonders, do you know that none of them were equal in wealth and money and dignity and positions and powers in the world like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, mm -hmm. Joseph, Esther, and now you are talking. Ruth, Abigail, Bathsheba, Deborah. You are talking of men and women of money. Mary Magdalene. You are now talking. All the miracle workers from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Never, never. They were not even a little bit. A multi-millionaires. None. It was all those who had certain traits that I read out to Mary today. I'll give you just, just like two of them or three. They had loyalty to God. They had honesty to God. They have love for human beings who qualify. That's it. And God gave them wealth. And all those who perform miracle signs and wonders. They had no money, they had no wealth, and many of them died and went to hell. So if you want to pursue miracle signs and wonders, go ahead. You want to pursue healing, go ahead. Because that's what people want, and that's why we will give it to them. Those who want miracle signs and wonders, will give it to them. And many of you, I'm going to announce it right now, many of you do not know that some of our core circles have the gift. I have healers now. I ask for it. I got healers. I got miracle workers, signs and wonders. I got them. I got people with discernment of spirits. I got people with various kind of tongues and interpretations. I got people with word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I got people with supernatural faith. I now got them this Easter. It has been given to us this week. Amen. So the ones I don't have, I call Amen. the person in my small group who has. Boom. They exercise it. Some of you are going to be rearranged. What you have been doing is not what you are going to be doing the next two, three years. You will be called upon by me. And you will be told where to fly to. And you will come there and you will see the rest waiting for you. And we're going to tell you what we have been waiting for you all of our life for, in your life. And you'll go home and resign from your job and go to where you have been sent to go. You are not going to start church. We don't operate on that. You must have a practical, booming, professional skill first before we even allow you to the pulpit. We don't, we don't do that nonsense which the church will spend seven, eight, nine, ten years to train somebody to be a preacher, to be a priest. That's nonsense. And they have no money. We are doing our own different. All of our priests and bishops are going to be professional people, bankers, lawyers, everybody has a gift. Electrician, engineers of different kind, we got them. That's what I'm out to do. That's why I say, Lucia, I don't think you are going anywhere. You go anywhere, <laughs> it won't even be God that I will send after you. I know who I'm going to send after you. And you'll get, you'll get, you get yourself, you get your donkey back to where you belong. You are not, and in fact, if you decide to go anywhere, people will reject you. They will reject you. What they will do to you, you will run. Uh -huh. There was one woman from Mexico that is part of our group and um, she was in the military she left us to go and join another group I told her don't go you don't belong there you belong to us she said oh no she want to go and join I said okay go the very first day she joined that group 
they were discussing something on the line she joined to discuss with them i don't know which group next thing she know quarrel broke out between her and that group do you know that they call they call they look up her number and they call the cop to come and pick her up in her house they call the cops on her yeah <laughs> they scatter yep they scatter yep another one i told her stay with us don't go and start your own thing because i don't see that she said ah, she's going to start her own <laughs> she went and started her own conference conference thing not a church like we do the, the conference thing where they meet to pray things like that so she went brought her uncle for the uncle to play guitar and play band and the dog came too they had some dogs there too yapping do you know in front <laughs> in front of the whole world she and the uncle began to quarrel before the entire world they were quarreling and calling each other names and cursing each other out and somebody told me what was happening and I and I called into that conference call and I heard this big quarreling going on and I shouted at her I said are you are aware that the camera is rolling are you aware that the entire world is she ran she was already on she was already on Facebook you know it was it was taping it was recording she now turned it off yeah yep that was the end of that one after that she became sick never recovered first thing the world of darkness do the world of wickedness they take your peace because your peace is a strong man stronger than them so they come in large group to bind it that's why if somebody dies or there's an accident or there's a problem there's a crisis hold yourself hold yourself don't lose it don't go you can be sad you can be mad but don't go into grieving stop grieving don't go into grieving if you go into grieving you've crossed the line you are not allowed to grieve you can weep but do not cross into grieving because that is that is the borderline for mental ill health mental illness and that is when you cross that line you've opened the door and the gates for demonic possession and for sat satanic terrorization in your life that's why you can get angry but after a few minutes let it go because you keep it anything any negative any negative threat you keep for a long time opens the door automatically it opens the door automatically for example if you are dealing with a divorce deal with it clean if 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 god is not doing anything about it go to court divorce the person get on with your life don't talk about it the longer it lingers the the, the more you open door for ill health for poverty and somebody will get killed you need to know this there are certain things somebody die after crying and weeping take a bath go about your normal business forget about it the person is not coming back that's the way we deal with things that's why the angel asked the women or oh, mary magdalene why are you weeping that's why jesus asked mary magdalene mary magdalene thought that he was the undertaker the gardener why are you weeping you can weep you can be sad and mad but don't become crazy don't cross that line a woman got mental ill health and when i did her deliverance the demon in her told me i said how did you enter he said she was crying so hard for her father that passed away a few months ago she was crying so hard she was saying she wanna die with him all that kind of thing and that that demon was the demon that used to live in her father so the demon had nowhere to go the demon was waiting for one or two things to escape and leave 
and go to the dry places. So while she was crying, she was hugging the dead body, kissing it, crying, doing all of that, the demon said, okay, you love him so much, all right, let's go. You will be as crazy as you are, you are late father, and the demon entered into, into her. When one piece is bound or bound in your life, the spirit of sadness take over. That's what that spirit is called, the spirit of sadness and grieving. You will lose your peace. You will become like an animal without brain. You start to do bizarre things. Your behavior will not be normal because you've lost your peace. You want to kill yourself. You want to commit suicide. You want to kill people. You want to quit your job. You want to do something miserable. You begin to make decisions that are, that are not really human. That are not you. You can't trust nobody. You become selfish. Control freak. Nobody knows more than you. Mr. and Mrs. Two, two know. <laughs> Ma, you know more than everybody. If you're a politician, you're going to stand there and wait while your people are dying. And it is what it is. That's what you'll say. Many a time, you start to put on weight or you start to lose weight. You start to emaciate and become like a skeleton, a bone. This is the one thing that you have to guard against more than any spiritual gift is your peace. And Jesus will not give nobody what he doesn't have. So if you are asking for the Holy Spirit to take possession of you, make sure that the first thing he drops into you is peace. Second thing, joy. Third thing, love. That's the way I go. Mine, the first that was given to me was joy. Then love was given. Then peace followed. That's how three of them entered into my body. I got them. They live in me. It's, a, it's like a virus running inside my blood. The only time you see me look like somebody that you should not approach is when I am acting as the Lord or I am acting in the office of a prophet. My voice booms, changes. I don't tolerate people. I want to refer people to Mary, Vivian, Victoria to take care of their problem. Because I want people, don't tell me no stories because I already know the story. In a flash, you appear before me, I know it. Don't tell me, I don't want to hear it. And people get offended. It's because I'm a different person at that time. I'm not, it's not me. So when I am not me, don't expect me to do the work of a, of a pastor. A pastor needs one, one gift to operate, and that is the gift of the love of human beings. Please, Mary, I hope you are writing it down. The one gift a pastor needs, a shepherd needs, is the love of human beings. Vivian, I hope you are writing it down. Yes. Go ahead. Who has stolen your peace? Many people can't sleep. They've lost their peace. A lot of things that passes for music, drug, a lot of things that passes for buy, 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 for fashion, for this, for that. People constantly changing homes. Five years here, another five years somewhere else. They keep moving, 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 moving. They keep changing men, keep changing women. Have many women. All of them are not for sex. All just for fun sometimes. Just to show up. Control. Just to be in control. Men and women who are not satisfied with who they are. Not that they are making any money. They are putting their troubles on everybody else. Mm -hmm. 
no fulfillment in life. They cannot, they cannot focus on one project, finish it, go to another project, finish it like I do. The onto drugs, all kind of sex. You have men who are having sex with men, having sex with animals, having sex with women. What the heck? You have women doing the same, having sex with women. How, how will a woman sex a woman? I don't get it. How? How do a man sex a man? I don't get it. How do they sex animals? I don't get it. But now I got it. I figure it out. They have lost their peace. And they are chasing it through all this. They are chasing it through alcohol. They drink and go to their hotel rooms and lay down naked till the alcohol vanishes and they start all over until their money finishes and they enter their plane and go and come and start all over because they have no peace. That's why they can't create nothing. Peace is used to create something. If you doubt me, ask our own Mary, the Mary of our mission. If you doubt me, ask Rosalind. If you doubt me, ask Victoria. Annie, I don't know whether my baby girl is there. Ask Annie. You doubt me, ask Vivian. Ask Juliet or Beatrice. Ask my blood sister, Christy, or Emily. We've all been there. Ask Uzo. We've all been there. You lose your peace, you can't focus on anything. No. Yeah. That's true. When sadness and weeping take over you, you'll be running when problem comes. Mm. One man stepped into the disciples of Jesus and became one of them. His betrayal of Jesus and his lying took peace away from that group on that night when that idiot, that Judas, the son of mango and banana, son of, son of carrot, mm -hmm. <laughs> when, he, when he walked and it was night, uh -huh. <laughs> so they, they asked some elementary school kids, who betrayed Jesus in the Bible? One child with his big old mouth. That child, if you see that child's head and face, he looked like an alien from another planet. I'm, I'm serious. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how children, some children are born and they look like old people. I'm telling you the truth. Some children look like old people. I don't know what is going on. Though. Where are we getting all these children from? We need to answer this question. Though. That child looked like something from a different planet. He had a funny head, funny face, funny voice. He said, teacher, I know, I know, I know I have the answer. The teacher said, okay, you, Marcus, tell me. Uh -huh. where, where, wh who, who betrayed Jesus? He said, uh, I think his name is Judas the Carrot. I said, that's right. That is it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Ay, ay, ay. Woo. Judas the carrot. Yep. Yep. As he remained for him. He should have said Judas the idiot. That would have been even been better, you know? Judas the idiot. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> yep, idiot. Yep, He's a fool. Dumb. Dumb, yep, dumb, dumb, dumb. A lot of things that you see people do on the earth, they are doing it for the progress of themselves, their families, and the human race. But a lot of things people do, they are doing it because they have lost their peace and they do not know how to handle it. They are running away. They are trying to run away from something that they don't know that is chasing them. They are running away from their guilt, their sins. They are running away from enemies. They are running away from failures. 
They are running away from unaccomplished projects. They are running away from the divorce that has happened to them. They are running away from their children. They are running away from God knows what. And to fill it up. Because when peace is taken from you, you have a place in your heart that nothing else, that particular place can only be filled with the peace of Jesus Christ. Now remember, when Paul writes, he says, may the peace of Christ. So, the peace we see that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit is the same peace that belonged to Jesus, that Paul was writing in all of his writing, the introduction, all the prolegomena, all the introduction of Paul's letters was about peace be to you. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the peace of God the Father. This is the peace of Jesus. This is the peace of the Holy Spirit. Really? So it's a tangible thing. It's a physical, mental, and supernatural manifestation. It's like a virus. It's a living entity inside you. And if it is taken from you, madness begins. You will run from problems. Instead of standing to solve the problem, you will do everything to flee from the problem. Even if you can handle it. And we saw two groups, two circles that had peace. The group of Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus and the group of Mary Magdalene. Those two groups had the peace of Jesus in them. And his core disciples, the eleven, they didn't have it. They didn't have it. They fled. They let their peace be taken, the peace of Christ be taken from them. When the angels met the women, they did not say peace. When Jesus met Mary Magdalene and her group, Jesus didn't say peace. But are you now seeing that when Jesus came through the door that was locked, he appeared in the he walked through that door. And goose bump rose in them. And their eyes were big like the eye of a lemon. A lemon. <laughs> or the eyes of owls. About to fall off from their eyes. They couldn't believe their eyes. He walked right to them. And what did he say to them? Peace be to you. Why? Peace because be yeah, peace be unto you. Because they've lost. They too, they've lost the foundation. They've lost the material that they need to survive life. That they need to become rich through him. This is not a peace. This is not peace. Please, somebody should back off from your phone a little bit. So that we don't hear your breathing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you see, this peace... The peace that will make you not to, 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 to make you to stop fleeing, to stop running, to stop enjoying crisis, to stop looking at problem and crisis as what should be governing your life, what you should be talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since your own peace cannot do the job, Amen. why not take why not ask Jesus to give you his own? He has enough of it in his body. As to give it to you. And now the church just uses peace as a word of tradition. Peace be unto you. Everybody reply and I'll sail with you. And the peace of God Almighty and all of that. Empty phrases. Empty words. No power. And those who are saying those things to you. And making a sign of the cross over you. They themselves don't have it. They can't give you what they don't have. Peace is not a sign of the cross made over you or a benediction. That's not what peace is. Peace is not benediction to tell you bye-bye, see you next Sunday. Get out of here. You children of hell or heaven, wherever, whoever you are, 
Get out of here. I don't need you guys anymore till next Sunday. That's not what peace is about. <laughs> peace is a physical thing, mental thing, supernatural thing poured into you that make you focus because if you don't have it, you can't focus in life. And you become sick one way or the other. You can't think clearly. You cannot think clearly if you don't have it. Don't let anybody steal your peace that Jesus has given to you, has planted. The word there is the peace of him. It's not your peace. It is his own that he has planted in you. That's how you know whether you're a child of God is, are you able to focus and finish a project? Are you able to focus and finish a task? If you are not, then you know that you are not complete in being a child of God. If you cannot sit down and read a book and finish it, you cannot start counting money and finish it. You have a job, you cannot stay on that job. You keep giving people excuses while you lose the job. You know that you do not have the peace of Jesus in you. You are trying to, to do your own peace. You are trying to do your own meditation. Ooh, whoa. Are you serious? You don't need all of that crap. To be a peaceful person. Watch. People without peace. Become violent. Become terrorists. Become murderers. So even the people. Who instigated the death of Jesus. Had no peace in themselves. Pilate had no peace. Caiaphas had no peace. Anas has no peace. All of them they had no peace. And people without peace want you to be like them. They think that madness and craziness is sweet. <laughs> they think that madness is sweet. It's not. Who took your peace away? So that you become unstable, you are living on the edge, you are always in a survival mood. People who, when they have money, they cannot stop their home with food, with everything they are going to need for a month or two. Survival mode. You ask yourself, do I really have the peace of God? Or do I have the spirit of sadness running in me? Because the spirit of sadness will not allow you to do any good thing for yourself. You can do for everybody else except you. You love everybody else, you can't love you. You put money aside for everybody else, your family members, people you are training, and not you. So when Jesus walked into that room, he faced the 11 disciples. The first thing, you see, they always deal with first thing first. He looked at them and saw that they've lost the primary thing they need to be who they should be as his disciples. So first and foremost, he bound the spirit of sadness and weeping and grieving. At his appearance, all the demon that was telling them to run, to become cowards, disloyal to deny him he bind them by his appearance and by the word of his mouth and what was the word of his mouth peace be unto you which means i introduce back to this group back to each of your body mind and spirit what you're supposed to have to stand your ground to be my disciple to be real men with real balls I give you back what you lost on Holy Thursday. Get back your peace now. Yeah. Yeah. Watch what Jesus says. Then you know what he's creating. He created peace. He introduced it back into them. Because when you lose your peace, you lose the Holy Ghost. When you lose your peace, any gift of God 
you have any gift that is natural, mental, spiritual, material, will become fake, contaminated, and you'll become a con artist. So right now they've lost the Holy Ghost. They've chased him away. You lose your peace, you lose the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to stay in a place that is not peaceful. He will not do that. So Jesus introduced them back to get first thing first, peace first. You want to be my disciples? You're going to get the foundation first. Peace first. Peace be unto you. Which means peace enter each of you. Get back to peace. Whereby it doesn't matter what is happening. You stand your ground. Here you stand your ground. You do. You don't run. Crisis doesn't shake you. Let me tell you. If problem happen to you once, twice, and they don't move you, problem will be too crazy as to keep coming to you. It will stop automatically. Because you are not paying any attention. You are bigger than problem. Peace. The peace of Christ in you make you bigger than any problem that has ever been in this world. Amen. The peace of Jesus in you will make you stronger than any demon that has ever been created. Stronger than any Lucifer that has ever been created. Do you know what Satan does not have that you have? And that is why they don't like you. What wicked people do not have that you have? You have peace. And they don't have it. So who is better now? Me. You are. Me. You are. We. We are. We got what they don't have. Demons don't have peace. Satan and his group don't have peace. Wicked people don't have peace. Who followed Satan? Do you know that? They don't have it. That's why you are supposed to be better than them. You are supposed to be wealthier than them. You are supposed to be healthier than them because you got the God thing in you. The real thing. I give you back your peace. From now on, don't lose it. Do everything to protect it. And every crisis and problem should not make you run. I'm the one who is supposed to run from being killed. And I am at peace with myself. Are you guys aware that Everything that was happening to Jesus. He said the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. What was the spirit is willing? What was it? He had the peace. That passes all understanding. God your heart and mind. Did you hear that? He didn't say it was joy that does that. Please, if anybody find it, you read it for us. The peace of Christ that passes all understanding. If you see it, you read it. Mary, Ma Mary, um, have you finished? Vicky, look at that passage and Vivian or Rosalind. Any of you, you see it, you read it, you stop me, you read it. The peace of God that passes all, so that you begin to see what peace is. See, you see, it's something that is so strong. You have it, you got everything. He did not say love will do it. He didn't say joy will do it. He didn't say self control will do it. He didn't say uh, patience will do it. He didn't all those things. Nope. Peace does it. Okay, found it. Okay, read it. All right, Philippians four six. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. Be steady. Don't God. rush. Vicky, don't rush us. Don't run. Okay. You okay. have. You are reading from something powerful and sacred. Don't rush. When you are dealing with right. the Bible, take it. Go slowly. Let everybody else run. Don't run. 
Those who run don't get anything from God. I've learned. I've learned the hard way. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. Okay. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Stop there. And the peace of God. It didn't say your own peace. It didn't say the peace of the world. It didn't say the peace that comes when the religion, religions of the world come together and smoke a peace pipe. That's not it. No. It is a peace that only God gave. This is not what Satan or demons or any human being can give you. People can come and comfort you when things happen. Nope. When I step into the scene, I'm not coming to give you my own peace or peace of the church. I'm coming to give you the peace of God, the peace of Christ. And the peace of God that does what? That surpasses all understanding. Stop there. Surpasses all understanding. Are you kidding me? It surpasses all understanding. You can't even comprehend it. It's not something that you can pinpoint or even make sense of. It's, it's higher than the system of this world. It's bigger. It's a big thing. It passes all knowledge, understanding. It's not what you get from college or from elementary, kindergarten or high school or university. It doesn't come from being rich or being poor. This is something in a class of its own. And it's only for those of high class like you and I. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It covers everything. Is in a class of his own. Does what? Continue to read. Do what? Will guard your heart. Okay, stop! You receive it. It is a protector. You see it. That is the garden of the gates and of the door. Will guard. What do guards do? Do they not protect? Yeah. Do they not fight? Do they not fight? If somebody tried to break in where they are guarding, do they just stand there and say, okay, mm -hmm. you can go on, go and steal. If robbers are coming, the guards say, oh, okay, I step aside, do you guys go and, go and take whatever you want, don't kill me. Is that what real guards do? Huh? When mm -hmm. police are on guard, do thieves break in? Will people misbehave? Yeah. See, people yeah. misbehave because peace is not there. Yeah. Yeah. Peace is a security yeah. officer. The one security yeah. officer that God has sent into you, physically speaking, mentally speaking, spiritually speaking, is peace. You should tell God that you want to be anointed with peace. As an anointing. That's number one. Please, I hope, Vivian, you are writing it down and, and the Samantha. Ask God to anoint you with the spirit of peace. That's number one. Number two, ask God to create an atmosphere of peace for you to walk in. For you to roll in. So that you can prosper without stress. You come into a neighborhood, that neighborhood will be on edge. Everyone without peace will need to leave the neighborhood. Because the captain of peace is here. That's number two. Number three. Ask God to baptize you with the baptism of peace. Baptism is the baptism. Number, number four. Ask God to send you the angel of peace. Ha 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 ha. The angel of peace. To follow your life. 
I hope you've written it down for me. Let's continue. Peace is a security officer. He's a protector. That's his job. It's to protect the treasure. Wow! So write that as a power tip. Shanti, I hope you are listening to this. Yeah. Christy, where are you? Yeah, Christy, where are you? I hope you, you are aware. I'm right here. Okay. Right oh, here. Good, good, good. Hope you know that peace is a soldier. He's fortified, equipped to fight for you. He's a fighter. He's a warrior. So you only see that eh, it's peace, uh, peace of Christ. Uh, yeah. Can you can you bless us? And the priest or the pastor or the preacher make a sign of the cross or lay his hand on you and ask for peace to come on you. And you go away. Instead of delivering the stuff into you, he's praying for you. You don't pray for peace. You you <laughs> you don't pray for peace. You don't pray for peace. You don't pray for people to get peace. You give them peace. You give them what you got. So if somebody doesn't have no peace and is praying for you to have peace, what do you think he's giving to you? Huh? He's giving you L pieces. He's giving you pieces. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness oh gosh it's giving you pieces because you go out there look at how your life is tattered in so many places like broken bottles all over the place pieces that's what he gave you he gave you pieces instead of peace that's why you are scattered everywhere El pieces that's what he just gave you <laughs> <sighs> you don't know how a lot of dead people when they die are praying that their pastors and their preachers do not come to conduct their funeral service you don't know how dead people they are praying that their pastors or preacher or deacons <laughs> should not come and do their funeral service and I ask the dead people why. Yeah. <laughs> I ask dead people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm music. Yeah. I ask the dead people, I say, why is it that you don't want your pastor or your preacher or your whatever title to come and conduct your friends? You say, you see, you see. I'm supposed to rest in peace. That guy has no peace. He's coming to make me rest in pieces. I'm coming to rest in pieces, you know? So that's why I'm praying that... <laughs> that's why I'm praying that he should not be the one. That man, that man has pieces. How can he come to tell me to rest in peace when he himself is pieces? Eh? And now I'll have no rest in peace. I'm going to rest in pieces. God have mercy. <laughs> the peace of God that surpasses or passes all understanding. God! Let's see what they got. Go, Vicky, go. Will guard your heart. Number one. And will guard your <coughs> heart. Whether you guard your heart and what? And mind. Oh, stop. Did you guys hear that? Did he say, did he say love or joy will do that? No. He said, peace will do that. <coughs> he said, peace will guard 
your heart and mind. So which one is heart? Cardia. And which one is mind? Heart means your innermost self. You as a spirit person is not shaken. Your interior life is not shaken. That's your heart. The deepest places of love and believing and asserting and choosing from the highest point of you as a spirit is called heart. The deepest places of affection that is not come and go. Final conclusion. Finito. Don't deal. That's it. Heart. And mind. Mind is simply your mind. Not you as a spirit. It's your mind. Made for movement. Made for thinking. Made for filing. Filing experiences, memories, that's the mind. Cognition, empirical. The existential part of you that is connected with your physical self. Try to make sense of things. Try to probe into things. Try to imagine things. Try to create things. Think about if the mind does all of that. Think about if when you as a spirit begin to be like that. And you take over the resources of the mind. You'll be a genius overnight. A lot of reason why people don't become geniuses. They are not honest. And they don't have loyalty. So their mind is working separate from them as a spirit and their body is separate too. <laughs> Peace. God. Heart. It got the spirit part of you. And it got the imaginative and creative part of you. The intellectual part of you, the mind. Peace. See what peace does? It's a God. Finish it. Finish it. Lord, your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, through Christ Jesus. Why through Christ Jesus? Because nothing of God is given except through Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. With Christ Jesus. Ha! Ah! So you never get anything that is your own. It will always have the name of Christ associated with anything you get. Hello, are you getting it? Yeah. Yes. You got it. That is why the peace of God, the peace of Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit, the devil cannot touch it. That's why there have been times, there have been times that things happen and I think, I think, what about if I do this and peace rose up within me and said, be quiet. I'm in charge here. I said, go, baby boy. Be, be calm. Be calm. There's nothing wrong here. No wahala. No wahala. Pull back. Stand back. And I did. Do you guys see the treasures that we have? This is real Christianity. Mm -hmm. This is no ritual. This is no tradition. Because this is real Christianity. 
tangible thing in Christ Jesus. So tell me how those without Christ Jesus are going to have peace. And they are calling for peace meeting, peace mediation, peace negotiation. And they don't have Christ Jesus nor his peace. How can people without peace come to negotiate peace? None. And then they are passing the peace pipe to each other to smoke. Instead of it calming them down and making them to be peaceful, they become high. And they even lose more of their peace anyway, whether they know it or not. See, we are the most blessed people. We are the most yeah. blessed people yes, in the face of the planet. Amen. We are the most blessed people. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. What we got, a lot of Christians, a lot of groups, a lot of churches, they don't have it. Everyone should say amen to that. Amen. amen. That's so true. Amen. 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 What other people have, I mean, what we have, other churches do not have it. They don't. They really Amen. don't. They, they don't. don't. They, don't. they don't. Amen. We're blessed. They don't. Amen. They don't. Amen. Mary, are you done with that reading? Jesus gave them this. No. Confused mind. Running hearts. Jesus came to give them peace that will guard their hearts and mind through him. That's why Peter was able to deny Jesus and fled too, like the rest of them. Because you lose your peace, you will deny Jesus. You will do anything and say to hell with him. Because you don't have your peace. You don't have his peace in you. Hallelujah. Vicky, uh, Mary, finish the reading. Yeah, verse 21. Then said Jesus to, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them. And say unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Stop there. Now go to the other one. While you are going to the other one, I will start explaining this one. You cannot to go, you cannot go to do business and investment and to be fishers of men and to bring other people to Jesus when you don't have his peace. That will guard your heart and mind as to how to do things on earth. You cannot. You'll make a mess of it. That's why a lot of people have made a mess of the story of Jesus, of evangelization or evangelism. People come, a, a young a young boy, a Messianic Jew, saw me on the news strip of Las Vegas and stopped me. I wanted to hand a book to me. I said, what's this book about? He said, he's a Messianic Jew. I said, yes, what is it about? He said, he want to ask me that what about if I die tonight? Will I go to heaven? I said, what has going to heaven got to do? I said, where is your mother? He said, there she is. I said, I want to talk to you and your mother. The mother was also evangelizing, talking to some people and passing out some Jewish messianic book. So I said, mama, come, come, let me talk to two of you. I said, I want your son to tell me exactly what he just told me. And the son goes, if you die tonight, where are you going to spend eternity? Will you be going to heaven? I said to them, you see, this question alone is a scary question. The things of God doesn't scare people. The things of God draws people in with happiness. 
everyone who came to Jesus to receive salvation or one healing or miracle or the others left happy. You're scaring me by telling me about dying. What has dying got to do with heaven? What has dying got to do with salvation? Christ died for me. Is that not true? She said yes. So why are you talking to me about me dying? You're telling me if I die tonight, are you pronouncing a curse on me? Then if that's what two of you are doing, two of you are going to die tonight. <laughs> they were shaken. I said, you should be telling people about the story of Jesus without attaching hellfire and demons and Satan. Tell them about the Son of God who died for me. Not me dying tonight. If you want me to die tonight, two of you will drop dead right here. Do you know they couldn't do evangelism anymore? So you need to go and rewrite that book. That's why we are going to write our own evangelism book. How it should be. But that, that is how a lot of churches do the evangelism. To scare people. A lot of people believe in Jesus because they saw a movie of Hellfire. I want people to go to heaven because of Jesus. I want people to I want people to receive salvation because of Jesus. Because they are they are excited about always being with God the Father while they are on the earth. Excited and happy about being children of God. Why do you want to attach hell and dying to me being a child of God? That's demonic. You know that woman took his son and they went to someone else to go and talk to. I said, God will judge two of you if you continue to do evangelism this way because this is why people are not receiving the gospel through you guys. And that is true. So I stood there and I said to people, how many of you want to receive the Jesus that will give you money? People started rushing to me. They ran to me. Do you want Jesus that will heal you? They say, yay! How many of you want to stop gambling? Yay! How many of you want to stop? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Drug addiction, they say yay! I said, say, let's say the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And they said it. Make me your child. They say yes, they, they repeat it. Write my name in the book of life and let nothing take me out of it. And they did so. I said, you are born again. You can go back to what you are doing. Bye-bye. I laughed. People were healed right on the spot. Why do you need to attach hellfire? Dying tonight or dying tomorrow. Yeah, it's a genuine question, but that is not a question that will attract people to Jesus. You never... Show me anywhere in the Bible where evangelism was done, that method. So where are they getting these stupid things from? Is that what the angel told Cornelius? Cornelius was, no. Cornelius was a, a Gentile that, that became a Jew. When the angel came, he said, your arms giving and your good thing you've been doing has been seen by God. That's what the angel said. Now, go to Joppa and get Peter. He will come and tell you what to do which was Peter was to come to tell him the story of Jesus. The angel did not talk about Satan, demons, deliverance, hellfire, none. Came to tell him about the good things he has already done that has qualified him for heaven, but it's not enough until he received Jesus. And then, or, and then he would even have a bigger harvest. And when Peter arrived, did Peter talk about going to hell? No. No. Did Peter talk about going to heaven? No. Did Peter talk about going to heaven? No. He started talking about Jesus, the Son of God, and what happened? The Holy Ghost fell on Cornelius. Cornelius, Cornelius and his family and all the military people he brought and his friends, they did not even say the sinner's prayer. And the Holy Ghost fell on them. Isn't that strange? Rosalind, is that not strange? Isn't that strange? It is. We want people to go through the hoops and loops. You must go to a catechism class. 
Then you go to catechetical class, teaching class. Then you go to ordination class. Then you go to right hand, receive right hand of fellowship class. Then you, you go to baptism class. Then you, you go and learn how to give tight class. What a nuisance. The angel did not preach the gospel to Cornelius. Peter was just opening his mouth to begin to tell the story of Jesus. The Jesus he saw. Bam! No sinner's prayer. The Holy Ghost fell on them and they started to speak in tongues. Go and read the ad, you see it. People won't. Let me tell you, my job is to break the protocols and laws of all these stupid churches. Amen. Did the thief on the cross, did he pass through catechism class? Did he pass no. through baptism class? Did he pass no. through did he pass through right hand of fellowship class? How no. to pay your tight class? If you don't no. pay, we will not bury you class. Yep. No. no. Did he even say the sinner's prayer? Did he? Did no. the thief on the cross say the sinner's prayers? People, did he? No. no. And yet Jesus, all he said is, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom because I know you are a king. I know you are a king. I know they were mocking yeah. you. I know who you are. Do you know what he meant by that, by, that, by that word? Jesus, that's what he said. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Do you know what it means? Mm -hmm. He summarized all the baptism, all the, what do we call it? The other one that they bring you in after baptism. I don't even remember the name, so it's gone from my head a long time ago because I don't practice that nonsense. You know, all these rituals, all these different things by Pentecostals, by Evangelical Baptists, Lutherans, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, all these different crazy groups. <laughs> Vivian, make sure you don't laugh at me tonight. All these crazy groups, you know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know that the sinners of on, at the, the, do you know that the, 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 the thief at the cross was a smarter theologian than the rest of the church? What did he say? He summarized the doctrine and tradition and ritual of the church into one sentence. He said, Jesus! He called him by name. Remember that? He did not say rabbi. He did not say master. Like we try almighty God. How many potent God? How many science God? And you look at their mouth to look like at one when they are saying like a hook. How many? How many? How many? And God simply want to be called by name. Daddy. My father. My Jesus. My Holy Spirit. My love and my darling king. That's it. And we are so much used to the power phrases, power, title hungry people, title freak. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What did he mean by that? He said, Jesus, take me with you wherever you are going. That's all he said. Did you guys hear me? Yes. Jesus, take me with you. Wherever you are going, take me with you. Did Jesus take him take take him with him? Yes, he did. Yes, yes he did. No baptism, no catechism, no study of doctrine, no theology, no ritual, no a Oh gosh. He got all that crap. Out. Huh? I said no confirmation. No con confirmation. Thank you. No confirmation. He got confirmed, baptized, baptized in the Holy Ghost, everything at one. He just said, Jesus, take me with you wherever you are going. Take me with you. That's the meaning of what he said. And Jesus took him. <sighs> God, you're wonderful. 
thank you for making me, thank you for making Idikai marry the way he is. And hold me, and I will never disappoint you. Because it's the time for you to cut that crap out. Cut the protocol, cut the laws out. And go ahead and do what you should do. Cut it out! You don't need it. You do not need it. Cut these things out. Go straight to the point. Jesus, take me with you. That's all. He was saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and went straight to the kingdom of heaven. Straight. Hallelujah. And we, we think all this thing, christening, dedication, baptism, ordination, installation, all these things. And I know why people do this. Money and First power communion. Eh? and face communion and all of this. These are fine in their place, but there are times that you don't need it. Go straight to the game and throw the ball in. Kick it in. Sometimes we waste people's time. People that should have entered into a life with Jesus, we waste their time. They've lost their peace. They cannot be his disciples anymore. He came to return them to peace. How can they go? And make disciples. Just as my father has sent me, I sent you. Did Jesus lose his peace through? He is the one who has been bitten. He is the one who has been crucified. He is the one who died. He is the one who has been buried. Was it the disciples? No. Those who were not bitten, those who were not slapped and spit on, those who were not tortured, those who were not condemned at judgment are running. And the person who suffered all this wasn't running. Isn't that strange, people of God? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Because I'm getting yeah. crazy here. I'm getting mad at the I'm getting mad at the disciples. The one who is going through the crisis and the torture did not run. It is you bunch of idiots that are running. in the Senate saying they are a bunch of jackassery you know <laughs> God have mercy the donkeys are, and horses are running you know people who are so, the person who is supposed to run and be in a crisis and flee for his life is there going through the ordeal and those who are not going through it are fleeing for their lives. So there is no way, there is no way anybody is going to tell me, yeah, it is there. Mary is true, what you said, that they all have their different personality. But there is a place where you don't, you don't need to have your different personality. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> You guys do not know why I love Mary very much, because she's blunt with me. Say, there is a place that, you know, we all have our different personality, but it's a place where you don't need to have your different personality. You need to be honest and loyal and stand your ground. Hallelujah. Can you imagine what happens when a lion come to come to take one 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 little buffalo and all the buffalo gather together and go against the lions? It doesn't matter how many lions they are; all the lions will flee yeah. because uh, because the buffaloes came together. They didn't panic. One of them panicked. The lion get a meal. Show me where buffaloes. They know we are not going anywhere. We got horns. You guys got claws and teeth. Let's see who can kill quick. You need to walk a whole lot. Sometimes they break teeth. The lions do. They tell the lion, you come. And you know lions are very trickish. 
They will allow one buffalo to chase them and they will pretend like they are running far away so as to lure him from the group. That's what we call ambush. And then turn around to get that one. So, they, so you hear the buffalo telling that one, come back, come back. Don't, don't follow the lions. Cal's family does that. They will pretend like they are running away from you. But they want one of you to chase them. So as to so that you are out of the crowd. So that they can now come and attack you. We call that ambush tactics. So when you see lions or the cat family running, don't run after them. Go back to the group. Don't run. Stay together. Stay together. And achieve a common purpose. So Jesus said, you guys cannot achieve a common purpose. You cannot be my witness. You cannot handle my money. You cannot handle my investment. Take back your peace. He gave it to them. Bram! They were changed. Yeah. Next thing. He doubled the peace. Can you imagine it? He doubled it. I think it was the one of um, the one of Tom. Uh, is are you reading the one of Thomas? Is that the one you are reading? No. Huh? Not yet. That one. Not yet. Okay. So Okay. Read twenty. So you see here. He gave them the first thing first peace. Now you cannot go to God and be my disciples. You don't even know the scripture that I've been preaching to you and ministering to you. Yeah, first thing first, peace first. Then you can be his disciples. As the Father has sent me, so sent I you. Then, until peace comes, then you are called, you are chosen. He gave them a commission. Anybody who will go away from me, that's their problem. But you've been given a commission. A commandment. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. To go and tell my story. Go and solve human problem through telling my stories. Then, he breathed on them the Holy Ghost. See how it follows? Peace, mm -hmm. commission, Holy Ghost. See? Mm -hmm. Peace first. Commission second. Holy Ghost third. And people are ordained in the ordination ceremony, installation ceremony. Peace is not given. Then they run from, they leave peace out. They give them commission and they leave the Holy Ghost out. And what do you have there? Fufu pastors, fufu apostles, fufu prophets. Cuckoo, cuckoo bishops, fufu popes and cardinals, his eminences, crazy pastors, crazy priests, child molesters, boys molesters, little boys molesters. Peace wasn't given, Holy Ghost wasn't given, commission given. What do you have? Empty. Instead of priests, you have pieces. Instead of pastors, you have poverty. Do you guys get it? Mm -hmm. They were given commission. They were not given Holy Ghost. They were not given peace. So they come to do church work with demons and with Satan. So what do you think Christianity will be like? A business, a job for the leaders of the churches. Yep, it's a job. Like any other job. God has no hand in it. The church gave them commission. They didn't give them the peace. And they didn't give them the Holy Ghost. Go and look at divinity school, Bible school, theology schools. Go and look at all of them. Rabbinic schools, go and take a look. Nobody is teaching or doing practical theological studies. No practical biblical studies. The teaching about the Holy Ghost is very little. There is no practice. There is no infilling with the manifestation. None. Why? Because if the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to reveal who these people who are teaching you, who your professors really are. 
those who are witches will explode and they don't want it many of them become bishops by killing somebody they went to somewhere else to get power to get luck and juju it's true the seminary that i attended you guys do not want to hear the story the methodists fought in that place and kill each other methodists because it's a it's a seminary that was jointly owned by anglicans presbyterians methodists the methodists kick each other's butt busted into sprinter groups and some of them brought juju to that seminary they brought juju and buried it there thunder almost killed one of my professor professor george okeke an anglican an anglican that came to do his sabbatical with us from university of nigeria and soccer department of religion thunder came there to come and look for him in the house where he was staying inside the inside the campus there he fled he fled for his life and i think they shut that house down go and see when some when they have to make a bishop go and see what will happen it's like when politics start when they are about to have uh, election in countries of the world go and see how many people are going to die go and see human being are power power uh, what do we call power a uh, freak money freak when power and money show up craziness show up that's why Felakuti called democracy he called it the demonstration of craziness demonstration of craze because that is when we demonstrate craziness what is in people will show up go and see the confirmation of katanga jackson brown go and see the craziness all the demons in people rose up number one they can't be like her they are not qualified like her they are not brilliant forget about what they are saying about how she ruled how she done every judge has her own discretion to determine cases it's not that they do not know if i am if i am to be elected to soup i mean people cannot they know me they know that i won't tolerate that nonsense they they, they treat people who it's like Hillary Clinton who is quiet, doesn't, she has determined that this is how she want to look like. So no matter what, she, she doesn't want to lose her temper. Not me. Not me. People keep away from me. The church in Nigeria, when some of the pastors see the way that I do ministry, they wanted to react. And something tell them, don't go. Do not go. Don't go down. If, are you going after the chimera? It's not gonna be don't don't go there. Just back off. <laughs> don't just back off. Don't. It's not it's a no go area. It's sealed. People do die in the process. They get in church. They lost everything. So don't even go there. Because they they all know that I'm doing what we call ecumenical ministry. I minister to all the churches. I carry all the traditions. This is the one-stop shop, the one-stop shop for Christianity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See how it Hallelujah. goes? Hallelujah. Peace, commission, Holy Ghost. Mary, read us the other one. Yeah, verse 26. And after eight days, Again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, shut. and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. <laughs> Continue. Then said, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, 
and behold my my hand and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing yep. and thomas answered and said unto him my, my lord and my god, and my god. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be. Hallelujah. Be to God. This is the word of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, Praise so, you, Lord yeah. See that? Whenever Jesus appeared to the disciples, it's always peace. I'm giving you, so he keep building. The foundation has to be strong. Peace has to be very strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. I want, you, I want you to ask Jesus tonight. You are very delicate. Either you are too legalistic or you are too flexible. Either you are a runner at every, every problem or you are judgmental at every problem and complaining. Tell Jesus that you need that peace, that God, that is a God of you as a spirit being and of your mind. You want to be stable, you want to be steady, you want to be powerful, you want to be an achiever, you are a winner. Tell him that's what you need. Tell him that you want your Christianity to be based on concrete experience. I followed Jesus because of my experience of him and the Father and the Holy Ghost and my experience of angels. I've seen angels physically. I sat in a restaurant eating and the person who sat opposite me told me, can I join you? I said, yeah. For some reason I cannot look into his face. Try to look at his face, he always put his face down. The next day I'm traveling to New York. I don't know who the hell this man is. So he's eating, he's trying to make me, so I asked him, why do you come to sit near me? I don't know who the hell you are. Oh, he said he, just, he doesn't want to sit alone. He didn't tell me anything that is worth anything. So we just ate quietly. I didn't want to say anything. Then he lifted up his eyes and looked at me and said, so you're going to New York tomorrow. <laughs> I laughed. They say laugh that I love that says, you think I don't know who you are. That's what the laughter is about. And my voice become very deep. And I tried to look at his face. He put his face down. He said, well, you don't need to stay too long in New York. And this is what will be happening. So you need to come back, seven sound, be careful out there. And he stood up, took his, left his plate there. And he walked towards the door and vanished. I saw the man vanished before my eyes. I saw it. And I was like, wow. 
How do a total stranger know that I'm going to New York the next day? Someone with an olive colored skin. Not white, not black, not, not brown, but olive kind of skin. Don't want to look into my face. You, you tell me, oh, sir, can I come and sit and eat with you? But you have nothing to say. Then he ate his food quickly. That was strange. Turn around and say that he knows that I'm going to, to New York tomorrow. I was shocked. And I watched him as he went towards the door. And nobody was at the side of the door where he was leaving. He behaved like, you know those machines that they put toys. You put money and you, I think, Vicky, how do they do that thing? I think uh, kids put money and they press something and a, a toy will come out. Is that something like that? Is that how that thing works? I think so. Oh, yeah. 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 So he, he, he played, he, he, he doesn't know I was watching him. He, he was doing like he's, he's trying to play with that thing. And he walks towards the door and vanished right before my eyes. And I knew that was an angel of the Lord. And throughout on my flight, I felt that there were two angels with me. One was my regular angel. And one was that man. Throughout the time I was flying and I was in New York, two people were walking with me. I felt it so strongly. People were, those two people were watching me. Very strange. Woke up in the night. Woke up in the night. And here in front of me was an angel of the Lord. And started to transfer messages into my I heard him very clearly, like I'm talking face to face with all of you. And then at that point I was I was I was uh, transfigured into my real self. My real self began to speak. It was spirit speaking to spirit. No mouth communication, no mind communication, but spirit to spirit transfer. And everything he told me is I can never talk about it because he's preparing me for the future. Most of what they, they, are pre they prepared me for has not yet manifested. I mean, not, no vision. I wasn't praying. I wasn't sleeping. I've had this kind of encounter going on. That's why I am... That's why I do ministry the way I do ministry. With boldness and power and authority. Speaking as God himself. When he wants me to do that. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to pray. And ask God. Give you back your peace. That's number one. There is power in a peaceful person. More than somebody who has all the gift of healing and prophesying and prophetic powers. The person with peace is far more better, stronger, and will become more famous, more richer than these other ones. If you have peace, you can now pray for this other gift. You can now pray for these other fruits, for these other baptisms. Begin to pray right now, and then you can go. We are not asking people for money, but remember, I need 2,000 people to drop in 10,000, 20,000, 30, 40, 50, a million dollar from 10,000. So we are looking forward to it to go and purchase some units, some doors. So let's go and do it. It's about time. Let's go and do it. Please, people, begin to pray. Ask Hallelujah. for your foundation be built today. Being born again is one thing, having peace is another thing. Being commissioned is one thing, having the Holy Ghost is another thing. You need a double, a double anointing of peace, a triple anointing of peace tonight. If you don't want it, 
then pray that God give it to me. I'm willing to get it. Pray that peace be given to our mission, to our, to our two businesses. Begin to pray that peace be given to your children. Your children, are dumb. it doesn't matter how little, whether they are as tiny as anything, we need that peace right now. We need that peace right here, right now. Begin to pray for it. You need peace. There is peace. There is power in a peaceful person. You got it, you won't be running anymore. You won't allow crisis and problem to control you. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray until you get it. Then you go out and go home. If you want to run and leave the program, you can do that. That's left for you. None of my business. Your job is to do your own part. That peace that you give out, Jesus, I want that peace Begin to pray. Begin to pray.